What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Roy Jones from Project Zero Racing and you guessed it, we're doing pink race car bits again. Well guys, welcome back to the channel. There's a box in front of me and those of you who watched the last episode will have seen me take the clocks out of the car. Now, I just want to put this out there as a disclaimer. I did not want to buy this at all in any way, shape or form. It was not on my list of things to do. But it came up at a reasonably good price and it's a pretty much direct fit for this car because of where it's come from. So without further ado, let's open this box and see what the hell we've got going on. There's three parts to this puzzle. Just three parts, nothing more, nothing less, just three. Uh, we'll go for this one first, let's go first. So, here we have a, <laughs> uh, a clock surround, a face of clock surround for the focus. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> so, first part. Um, second part then is a wiring loom. Hmm, I wonder what's happening here. And then, third and finally, I'm going to come close to this one, we have the new dash for the focus. I would just like to point out that Originally, and I never intentionally went out of my way to put one of these in the car. It wasn't on the list of things to do. I was more than happy with the standard dials which, and clocks, which is why I had them adjusted to you know the new faces on the backs and backlights and all that kind of stuff. But with this dash now, we can utilize some more features of the Cybex ECU that we weren't originally doing before. So I can now use the dash to change maps through a camera system for the Cybex which pretty much makes switches and stuff I'm going to use obsolete. This is pretty much going to do everything now. We can hook a GPS up to this as well, which we can use for data logging through, obviously, through the dash um, and to do our best and predicted lap times, all that kind of good, fun stuff for me as a driver. When I'm out on track, it's going to be really important to make sure that I get a baseline of whereabouts I am and what sort of lap times I'm doing, which is also really good then for driver progression as well. I can see where I'm losing time, where I'm making time, whereabouts, you know, whether I can I can cut a couple of seconds off here and there, you know, it's it's a really, really, really good piece of kit, which is why, as much as I didn't want to buy it, I'm quite glad I have, because it is gonna save us some money in the long run with other stuff that we were gonna use in the background. So, yeah, new dash. We're now gonna put this onto the cowling, run the wiring harness onto it and then get it all plugged in and see if it does its thing or not. So let's get straight into that now. Keep watching. <laughs> Now, I need to say a massive shout out to Andy Cashmore, who's a massive nonce, but also uh, Andy down at BRC Performance, also Zed Cars, has 3D printed this cowl to fit directly in to the standard focus dash, which makes it an absolute doddle, because all you have to do, 
four bolts, put your wiring harness on the back, go into your car, plug the wiring harness in from the dash into the original loom, original loom on the car, click this in, two T20 bolts, and you're done. Well, I mean, nearly done. That they may or may not require some running of wires. A few, just three. Three, three wires. Can high, can low, accelerator pedal. Because the focus, our standard, a very silly setup again, runs the accelerator pedal through the clocks. Because focus reasons. So what we have to do is we've got to cut the wire from the clocks, add more wire on, run it all the way through to the ECU in the engine bay and then crimp it and put it into the stock. I say stock, into the loom. So, yeah, <laughs> wires. Big plug. Small plug. Done. So then guys, it's been a few weeks since I started filming this video. We had an issue with the loom that worked, I'd just like to point out, worked completely fine on another car. Um, for some particular reason, it despised my car. So what I did is, I worked out the issue with Andy, who's the guy who's been sorting it, Andy Cashmore from BRC Performance. Worked out the issue, sent it down to him, he did everything that he needed to do on the loom, he did a fucking absolutely superb job, got it back to me today. And um, put the loom in, put the dash in, put the kill switch on, uh, powered up the car, nothing at all. So, we did some fault finding, again, I'd like to point out, did some fault finding. Um, we were not getting ignition live to the cable on the dash, we were getting a constant live on pin 40. 2, pin 42, but we weren't getting ignition live on pin 4, so trace that back to the gem module, uh, we were getting continuity onto one of the big plugs on there, but we were not getting the switch live on the gem module, so <laughs> luckily got another car here that we're braking anyway, went and nicked the gem module off that, and guess what? It fucking works! It actually works, it's, it's powers up, it does exactly as it's supposed to now, so it's Numbnuts' ears <laughs> fault. <laughs> <laughs> for this whole escapade of why was the dash not working. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to get the laptop set up and we're going to get Mr. Cashmore to join us in the video on TeamViewer and we're going to set up the dash ready for start-up. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Fun and games! Yay! So, Andy Cashmore, Mr. Cashmore is on the other side of this. He's on Team Viewer doing his thing, as you can see, the mouse is doing its own thing. Uh, we've got the dash set up and on. We've literally got a trickle charge on as well, just to keep the battery voltage up. Uh, kill switches on, on and on, unarmed. Uh, ignition obviously is then on. Brings the dash on, so basically what Andy's going to go through now is about 300 billion different things for me and him to set up. So um, this will be a bit of a time lapse to get you all happy with what's going on. So Andy's just gone for a quick work meeting, so um, I'll show you what we've got up to so far. So, if we take the kill switch off, screen stays blank, and then ignition on, and the screen will light up. We get the Pro Zero Racing logo, which is sick, and then we come into the, the main dash, so we're going to adjust what I want on this now. We've also, through the canvas just for now, got it set up so you can flick through, <laughs> flick through into different pages on that as well and that's all using the factory canvas system through the stalk you'll be able to select change up and down um i've just got the delivery note for something that's coming for here uh so that'll be here tomorrow so we can get that on as well um and i'll probably put that into this video so we'll show that in this video anyway uh, i've also got something else which I'll, I'll get out now so here we have another steering wheel <laughs> so i've gone for um, I was originally going to go for the OMP Targa. Um, I then did a little bit of research and found that A, these are cheaper, um, just as good a quality, but B, they're the exact same wheel. So the Sabelt, I think it's an RW633, I think it is, is the exact same wheel as an OMP Targa, um, but 
with a Sabat logo on it. Okay, so there we have it. We've finally got um, the digital dash in the car. Finally, after freaking God knows how long. Uh, me and Andy have just been playing around for the last um, fucking hell, last hour and a half, just having a look at some stuff, working some stuff over canvas, doing some can signals with ECU and stuff. Um, can't really do an awful lot more until the car's running. Um, so we've got a couple of bits after that. I've got a couple of sensors now to buy because we're going to try and hook these sensors up to the ECU um, so we can get some extra stuff on the dash like coolant temp, which we've already got. Oil pressure and oil temperature is going to be the next two. Uh, luckily, uh, Andy's led me onto a sensor that I can use the same, so the same thread and pitch that can go into the original oil pressure um, thread on the block. And then we'll use that to just basically run the signal straight to the ECU so we can read them hopefully via canvas uh, to link up onto the dash which makes life a lot easier there are three key things on the dash coolant temp oil pressure oil temperature so the three things that i care about on the car realistically um, so i'm going to now have a play around uh, with the dash actual like how the dash background looks and stuff like that because we can and um, see what uh, someone could come up with and then we are fully digitized on the car no more analogs, no more clocks. We are back on to, or say back on to, we are now on a full digital setup. So that means everything can talk to each other. Um, and I look like I have a proper race car now. <laughs> proper race car with proper race car dash, which is nuts. Um, so, yeah. Oh, uh, am I going to leave it into this video? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what the next clip is. So I was going to wait for the next video to show you this, but. I might as well just tie it in with everything, so we've got everything as a one hit in this. So obviously we've got the new dash sorted, we've got the new steering wheel, and we've also got this little beauty. So this is a Volantec custom um, switch panel, steering wheel mounted switch panel. So what we've got going on here, we've got uh, the nice carbon fibre obviously. Uh, some beautiful wiring which I believe is done by a level, L, uh, level MSW, uh, and his stuff is freaking spectacular um, so what we've got on the steering wheel then we've got flash which um, which will be for the high beams so if you want to pass someone press that a couple of times so it gives their attention you see left indicator which is on a momentary so you're going to press that once and it holds it on again to turn it off we've got a map rotary switch on here so we can select what map we want on the ECU uh, to obviously go up or down in power got page up and page down which is to scroll through the dash um, so we'll be able to hook this up to the dash so we can page up page down look for the dash without actually having to go onto to the the stalk like i've shown you in this video we've got our traction control rotary switch as well so you can have traction all the way off or traction all the way on and obviously in between is on that as well um, we can obviously set through the maps we can have a high boost low boost medium boost etc etc boost by gear and then certain other little ones on there as well um, so we can we can switch that up obviously with attraction stuff as well right indicator and then this is the uh, the fun button right here uh, RAL which stands for rolling anti-lag so when you're driving along at set speed hold your button down start to rolling anti-lag make sure your foot's mashed on the accelerator the second you drop that button off you fly so that's all going to get tied in together I've got some wiring to do as you can see nice curly cord on the go um, so I've got a little bit of wiring to do to get that all hooked up and sorted um, I believe these two will go to the ECU uh, these two will go to the dash that will also go to the ECU uh, and the flash and the two indicators will obviously go back into the original harness so yeah that is the new custom backing plate with switches from Volatech. So if you're after a steering wheel set up like this, then send him a message. Uh, you'll find him on Instagram and Facebook. There's some sick stuff. This is all down to whatever you want. This is an all custom order, so you can have whatever you really want on these and he'll sort them out. So be sure to check out Volatech. And that will do for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit thrown around because there's bits and bobs here, there and everywhere. Um, just because of the issues that we had with the loom and stuff that obviously turned out to be 
<coughs> my own car's fault, but uh, moving swiftly on from that. Next video is the big one, or a biggish one. It's not the big one, it's a biggish one. So stay tuned, be sure to like and subscribe if you're not already. Um, I don't like begging for likes and subscribes, but if you want to see this build, if you want to see this continue on, be sure to, um, be sure to yeah, to subscribe and like and, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook and stuff as well. We do post some of the stuff that we don't do videos on Instagram, so you see some of the cool stuff on there as well. But yeah, there we have it, guys. That's me signing off with the Pink Focus. Catch you the next one. Bye now.